Hey everyone, and welcome to The Lost Bots. I am your host, Stephen Davis, and I am joined as always by my vertically challenged partner, Mr. Jeffrey Garner. What's up, people? And today, actually pretty happy about this one, today we are here to talk about threat hunting. Ah, uh, okay, cool. I got I got the run kind of hunting again. Hold on, have to change my background. Let me see if this works here. Boom, perfect. Oh. Most dangerous game. Um, you know, if you know who this is, some people may say he has a sparkling personality. Other people may say he's electric. Uh, but I think that's all the puns that I have for that. But if I memory serves, and it usually doesn't, didn't we already do an episode on threat hunting last season? Oh, dude, that doesn't count. I wasn't there. And it probably wasn't that good anyway. So I don't know what you're actually talking about. Yeah, sounds Romulan to me. So I, I, don't, I don't even know. So we're not going to talk about, uh, in, you know, in a general sense, somebody might have done something supposedly last season. We're, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this more practically today, for once, practically. And specifically, uh, what makes a good threat hunting hypothesis? All right, nerd. So I'm going to break out my beaker since we're getting all sciencey on us here. And we're going to talk about hypothe hypothesis is hypotheses, hypothesi, plural of whatever that word may be. Um, I know what it is science wise, uh, but what's a hypothesis relative to threat hunting? Uh, well, I'm sorry. Actually, it's, it's pretty similar, man. So um, the two key things that actually go into it is that it has to be uh, first observable meaning that you get to look at an event and what's going on within that event or that activity. And you get that, hey, that's weird or that kind of like unsettling feeling, uh, whatever the I'm case is. that right now looking at your background. So yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> Man, that's one for you. Um, yeah, something odd or suspicious or just not right uh, in your environment that rings a bell based on past experiences, okay? Uh, the second thing is that it has to be testable. OK, meaning that you have to have access to the data and the tools and techniques that are required to test out your hypothesis. So observable and testable. Yeah, well, that doesn't sound too vague or, or complicated at all. You know, not like you're making a map of strings. Um, do you have an example that someone like me could understand? <laughs> Absolutely, buddy. I'm here for you, man. Uh, so hypnothesis in general fall into three categories. All right. You have intelligence driven situational awareness, and domain expertise. All right, so let's first start off with an intelligence-driven hypnothesis, okay? Uh, that makes use of IOCs or knowledge, uh, aforementioned knowledge of, you know, typical TTPs. Um, so a good example of that would be uh, APT29 utilizes uh, this IP or this string of IPs to establish command and control channels. Therefore, if they've established persistence in my environment, I should be able to find that information, those ICs and those IPs, if I look at my firewall and network traffic logs. But it, it kind of sounds like the intelligence-driven hypnothesis um, would rely on things like traditional threat intelligence, um, IOCs, or stuff like external threat intelligence. Am I understanding at least that part of it correctly? That's correct. Yeah. Anything that gives additional data points would be awesome. So cool. uh, we're set. Perfect. Yeah. All right. The next one, situational hypotheses are based on knowing internal infrastructure, vulnerabilities, core assets, uh, you know, appliances, et cetera, et cetera. So an example of situational awareness, uh, hypno does this, would be we just acquired a company in a different part of the world and are establishing a network link between the two. This network connection will be utilized as an attack point if the new company is already compromised. And so in order to test that, I would be monitoring my network traffic between uh, in and out on that new network segment uh, much more intensely than, than I normally would. Okay. So, so, I mean, it, so it, it makes sense. Um, you know, you have to know the internal thing. You're basing your hypothesis on that. So your hypothesis wouldn't necessarily contain any of that, you know, IOC data, but when you're monitoring those network traffic in and out of it, that kind of threat intel could still have a role. It's just not part of the hypnothesis generation, basically. Correct. Okay, cool. Just making Correct. sure because there's a lot going around. <laughs> 
Finally, the last one, domain expertise uh, hypothesis uh, come from the hunter's own knowledge. Okay. Okay. So a good example of that would be the hunter knowing that a, a particular network protocol has been abused by a nation state actor in order to steal info, right? Uh, and that said adversary might be utilizing that protocol to exfiltrate data from his own org. That, that one, one, that one, it makes sense. It sounds like that's, that's one of the, it sounds like you're going in order of difficulty in my head, because it seems like the easiest one would be intelligence driven because you're already you, you can you can put all that together the situational awareness is a little bit more difficult because you have to actually have that knowledge of your infrastructure your vulnerabilities and all that to come up with the hypothesis and then again well hopefully we all do domain expertise you have to really have a, a good grasp of that domain in order to even start formalizing those hypotheses um if i read did i wrap that i just kind of summarize at least that bit correctly yeah, no 100 percent correct um you know domain expertise is, is exceedingly difficult for system administrators right organizations are so big they've been around for a while um and you know with uh retention you have new sysadmins come in old sysadmins you know leave so you come into a new environment that's been around for 15 20 years you're not going to know everything that's good. You're not going to know what ports are open unless you, you know, spend a majority of your first couple months there actively going in and learning your environment, which, I mean, you should be doing anyway. But yes, that is the most difficult one, in my personal opinion as well. So we finally agree on something. It, it's only taken how many episodes, but we're finally there. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I think, I think a question that would be on everybody's head, and it's, it's kind of on mine as well, is, you know, how... We got the hypothesis. We kind of know what's what's good, what's bad, what to look for. Where do you even get started? I mean, do these ideas just kind of, you know, they pop into your head or what What happens? Let me reference the single bean in the small can. So <laughs> all right, at the time they pop into my head. Only one, only one very, at a time. Very serially, just like in a little line. I got exactly. it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so let's see. How would I get started? Um, a lot of it could be common sense. Uh, so just hear me out on this, regardless of which type of uh, hypnothesis you're, uh, you're going to be generating, um, I would typically tend to start with the five W's, right? Who, what, when, where, and why. And when I say common sense, I meant like, you know, that the five W's are used for massive amounts of things outside of just threat hunting, right? Okay. Um, I was going to so say, it's kind of starting to feel a little... <laughs> <laughs> there's five things I got to remember single bean in the can there's there's too much going on I'm the single bean in the can man you're you've uh, got at least two all right well, thank you thank you I appreciate that um so let's put that into kind of like uh the discussion here uh in our previous example about APT uh 29 um you know attempting to do command and controls the who would be obviously APT 29 right uh the Not what the, band. Would, the what the band, not the band. Oh, God. Not another brick in the wall. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go on. Uh, the what would be the IPs that APT29 is utilizing? Where would be any of the endpoints to the internet? Right. Uh, when is pretty much at any time, right? APTs are all over the world, different time zones. Um, it's really not a nine to fiver, right? So it could be at any point. Uh, and then why is to obviously in that particular case establish persistence. Okay, so it's it's asking the right questions, kind of unlike I do in most meetings, where it just usually leads down to reference holes and never really gets to any kind of a pertinent answer. Um, this actually has a point to it. <laughs> I wouldn't know, man. I decline all the meetings you send me. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so let's go over the takeaways. All right. One, have a hypothesis. Okay. Hypo multiple hypotheses. Yes. Right. Your hypothesis has to be observable and testable. Okay? okay. In order to observe and test, you need to have access to the relevant data and the analytical tools in order to observe that data. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have a hypothesis that answers the five W's, that's great, but if you can't answer the question because of the, the lack of tools or the lack of expertise or knowledge to utilize those tools, then you've got a tech issue. So you have to keep that in mind. If you okay. can't answer the question because the data simply isn't there, that's more than likely a logging or collection issue, 
Okay, so you have to make sure that you are logging what you, you know, if you're going after a particular uh, TTP and you're not logging what that activity is around or based off of, you're not going to be able to find it and your threat hunting is, is going to fail. Okay, so, so, so it sounds it sounds like especially when you're considering a threat hunting program, when considering the tools, uh, data retention, storage rates, whatever that may be is definitely and this is just i'm kind of like zooming out from my head it's like the executive it's like okay great what i'm hearing is i need a lot of data if i'm going to be able to do this correctly and i need to be able to store this for a good amount of time because like you said in your example when it could That's be right. three could be three months it could have been the last day it could have been almost up to a year ago so you need to have at least some big chunk of time that you're storing and a lot of data to store it so that okay that sounds expensive but maybe not <laughs> oh i mean there's always a cost offset right i mean there's always a product that can meet the need <laughs> but i mean yeah you absolutely have to have you know more logs the better it's in my personal opinion it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it and there's nothing worse and i've been in situations like this where you're going after a particular event code or you need a particular log because of a bad situation and oh crap it's not being logged and that's a horrible horrible feeling um so make sure that you are logging uh the correct amount and types of logs prior to doing your threat hunting okay and then another good tip is to use a formal threat hunting model uh like the hunting maturity model or the diamond model um, got to put a ring on it, Queen B. Sorry. Ring on it. Um, yeah. Tahiti model. That's another one. Oh, uh, yeah. And then lastly, <laughs> don't be afraid of failing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your hunts may not succeed because the event hasn't even taken place in your environment. And that can be, you know, until you realize that, that can be kind of annoying, right? Like you might think you're failing, but hey, it's just that's not happening yet. I mean, if anybody would know all about failure and keeping on trying, I mean, you are the the role model for that, man. So kudos. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, if it entire life, I'm, I'm sorry. No, not too far. Most, most of my, most of my accomplishments are just nothing but big fails. Um, mm -hmm. But that does lead me to one of uh, my favorite quotes um, is what is the difference between a master and an apprentice? Mm, sounds like a, a, a bar joke, but I don't know. What was the difference? A master has failed more times than an apprentice has even tried. That's a much, dang, that is a lot deeper than I would expect. Right. No, that's pretty good, dude. I am impressed. I, I, had to impressed. Clear the, I had to clear the bean out to get that one in there. So <laughs> I think if we end on any note, we're going to have to end on that before it gets any worse. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate, uh, appreciate everything, and you all have a good one. All right, take care, everybody.